Hey Kevin here from DIYDork.com. Today I'm going to show you how I made this really low ground level floating deck for the front of our house. Our entryway used to not have anything whatsoever, so you'd walk out the front door down about 12 inches onto the sidewalk and it was just really awkward. So I decided to build a proper entryway for it. Now I've never built anything like this before and I was kind of learning as I went, but it turned out to be a really cool project, so check it out. All right, and check it out. I have all the joists nailed up nice and solid. And this thing is a beast. This is definitely going to be a heavy duty deck. I think, like I said, I've overbuilt it, but it turned out pretty nice. So, this thing is basically ready to put the decking on top now, but I want to go ahead and cover the tops of all these joists, similar to how I did the beam, just to help make them a little more waterproof and last a little longer than if I didn't have it. Now, if you remember earlier, when I covered the beam, I had that shiny metallic silver door and window seal flashing that I had left over from when we did the uh, siding on the house. And I didn't know if I wanted to use it on here on top of the joist, so when I was going to the store to go buy some more, I ended up finding this uh, deck seal. It's exactly the same thing, except it's black, like you can see there. So this would be perfect. The only problem is that this thing is 10 inches wide. So I'm probably going to cut it into four strips, about two and a half inches wide each. And it says it's 25 feet long, so I'll have plenty to cover all of these joists. So that's all I'll do next. I'll uh, slit that down and then cover all these before I start doing the decking. Alright, so I got that flashing cut down to about two and a half inches wide. And I actually like it a lot better than that window and door butyl tape. This stuff is more rubbery and it's thicker. And it just seems a lot better. So anyway, real simple. Just center it over the board smooth it down just roll over the edges and then what I'm doing is I'm going through about every six inches and putting a staple just to make sure that it stays in place do it on both sides and it's done I'll show you what it all looks like when it's totally finished all right and check it out this thing's looking great now got it all totally covered it's ready for decking I want to point one thing out real quick over here on my double rim joist on the side what I did was took this tape and I rolled it up the side so that way if water gets down here it's not going to go in between the boards it'll roll off this way. I think that'll help keep the uh, uh, sections right in between those two boards from rotting out faster than everything else. So now that it's all totally protected I'm going to start working on the decking. All right now I'm starting on the decking and uh, I figured out a couple tricks that I can now show you. So first of all very first thing I did was I measured from inside of this rim joist right here the brown one over to the inside of that one and on my deck it ended up being 126 and three quarter inches so my decking boards I bought were 12 feet so I was going to, have to chop them down anyway so I just marked them at that measurement and I cut them just inside so that way once they're installed there's just a little bit of gap all right now the other thing is that the boards when you look at them they tend to you know you're looking at them like a side profile they tend to have a little crown to them so I'm making sure the crown faces up and also, some of the boards seem to be just a little bit bowed. Some are straight and some have a little bit of curve to them. So I found that it's easier to have the curve face the um, boards you've already installed. Okay, just makes it a little easier when you can work from the inside and then slowly bend the board back into place as you work towards the outside. Now the other thing I'm doing that's probably a little bit different than every deck uh, installation guide I've seen is I'm starting from the outside and working towards the house. Usually they start at the house and they go all the way to the end and then the last board if it needs to get cut it's no big deal because it's going to get covered by the railing but since our deck is so low it's only about 12 inches off the ground I'm starting from the front because I think this is the part you're really going to notice you're going to see this and if you have a little skinny board I think it would look weird so I'm starting here with full boards and once I get towards the house the way that my measurements worked out I'm only going to have to cut just a little bit off of that last board plus it's going to get sucked under the uh, house trim and underneath the door frame and all that so it's no big deal I think that board would be a lot less noticeable than a little skinny one over here okay one more thing to think about as you're installing the boards is you want to think about how wet your boards are with the preservative and also what season it is the wetter the boards the closer you can install them together because when they dry out the boards are going to shrink and the gaps are going to open up okay now when I bought my boards they were totally brand new to the store and they had them there for only like three or four days and I was the first person to buy them now they were completely soaking wet with preservative 
and they were super dark brown but I've had them for about two or three weeks now so they've dried out somewhat but they're not totally dry so my spacing is not quite so black and white like it would be if you bought you know totally kiln dried boards or if yours are you know brand new soaking wet mine are kind of in between the other thing is you want to think about what season it is um, in the summer boards will soak up humidity in the air and they're going to expand in the winter when it gets really dry outside they're going to not have as much moisture and they're going to shrink and your gaps you know the, the the wood will move so your gaps are going to change throughout the year so it kind of depends on um, what season it is when you're installing as to how much gap to put in there plus like I said how how what the boards actually are now, like I said my boards are kind of in between they're not totally wet they're not totally dry plus right now it's really hot and humid in uh, June so um, I'm installing my boards I'm kind of erring on the uh, side of caution and I'm going ahead and putting a little gap in them so I've been using nails I have some tendy nails I have some little skinny interior trim nails and I also have these roofing nails and these seem to be about the sweet spot they're about an eighth inch um, diameter so all I'm doing is installing them in between the boards so there's a little bit of gap and then I'm starting in the middle and I'm putting in two screws these are just three inch uh, coated decking screws I put two in two in here and then I start working out from the middle because my my boards a little bit bowed and I found that if I start in the center I can then start to bend back the board and you know gap them correctly with these nails so it's pretty simple I'll show you how I do it all right first thing I'm doing is just driving in the screws a little bit just to mark a hole all right once I have that marked let me take this one out I found that I'm using my little countersink bit just to kind of wallow out that hole so that the head of the screw won't totally shred up the wood and look terrible it'd be a nice clean install so let me just wallow it out real quick my screw it should sit nice and flush. Nice clean install that way. There we go. Nice and clean. Alright so I'm getting a little further along and I want to show you something real quick. I have really nice even gaps and as I'm installing each board I'm finding that each one is wanting to install just a little differently so this is the one I'm working on now we got a really nice gap until look at this look how much that board bows out it's like a finger width down here so I really got to pull it in so what I've been doing is putting in a few screws to get a nice even gap and then I built this little clamp here, really simple, just an old 2x4. It's actually that leftover uh, window trim that I've used in other videos. A little piece of wood screwed down there, a little piece of wood screwed on top here, and then a separate board right here. And then what I'm doing is using two clamps to clamp this together and squeeze that gap. So let me show you how it works. It's real simple. check that out really nice super even gap I can go ahead and drop a couple screws here and then finish out the rest of the board all right so now I'm down to my last two decking boards so what I've decided to do is not install the second to last one just yet I'm just fitting it into place and I'm gonna take a measurement of how small I need to chop the other one down and I'm getting a measurement of four inches so I think what I'm gonna do is this last board that'll slide in there I'm gonna cut it down to three and three quarter then what I'll do is I will install that board first, I'll slide it under, then I can drop this one into place, screw it down, then I can screw the last one down. Right now I got them in and screwed in and it fits really nice, nice and tight right there and looks seamless. So now let me show you the whole thing all finished. Alright, ready for the reveal? <laughs> looks way different than you thought, didn't it? Alright, just kidding, here you go. Alright, so 
turned out really cool. I think I really like how you cannot see any supports whatsoever. It's just this wooden island floating out over the yard. Now, of course, we have to finish up the landscaping. I'm going to cover all the uh, black landscaping fabric with some uh, gravel, and we're going to get rid of the lava rock, put some gravel there, and some pavers here. I'll probably do a different video on that. But for now, it's finished, and now the house has a nice entranceway. It never had a deck or a porch or anything there. And uh, you'd walk out and immediately step down about 12 inches on the sidewalk, and it was just really awkward. So now we have a, a look, you know, kind of a little landing area here. And I really like the uh, picture frame type of framing around it. I think that's a really cool feature. A lot of times you see decks and the uh, boards just overhang the top. But I think that gives it a really cool polished finish. And then uh, I just really like the color of this wood. It's treated wood, but it looks like the color of uh, cedar. And it almost matches the wood up here. I'm going to let it dry. It's definitely just kind of raw right now. And the last six or seven boards that I installed were a lot more wet than the front board. So i got to let them all dry out and let the gaps kind of open up a little bit and then I'll finish it. And uh, I don't know if I'll have to stain a little bit to bring it up to more of the orange color or if just oiling it or applying a clear coat or whatever will do it. But i got to let it dry anyway before that happens. But anyway, I thought it turned out really cool. And uh, if you've been thinking of building something like this, it really wasn't too hard. It was, I mean, hard work, but it was a simple project overall. So there you go. It turned out really cool.